Mm. Hey, welcome to Camping with Steve. We got wasps in the house, so we're parking out here for the night. Beautiful wife is back with generous in-laws and having a good time out there. I have crazy neighbor here to help me, and we're setting up a 40-year-old canvas tent that we got from a, a wonderful lady who we were doing the lawns for, and uh, she sadly passed away, but her family uh, had said, you know, if it's in the garage, please take it and put, put it to good use. So we're here to set this up. We know it's 40 years old because we found a newspaper actually in it from 1980. So it's, uh, it's still actually in pretty good shape. We test set it up once, but you know, things that last for 100 years also weigh 100 pounds. So you don't want to take this with you too many places. We're going to try and set this up, see if we can figure it out again. And then we'll be hunkering down in no time. Can't believe we got this back in the bag. <laughs> well, we only tried to set it up a minute. Oh, I hear something clunking and thunking in here. Good. Okay, I think that's the ground sheet or something. I think this is uh, this is the, the tent, and that's the fly, probably. Okay, you stay out there, I'll spread this one. Wow, we still got a fly to put on this thing, but this seems like a like a winter tent almost. I don't think it's going to be nice and cool in the morning when the sun comes up. But yeah, setup uh, doesn't get easier than that. Uh, that was step one. Well, this is clearly a winter tent. Uh, there's no way that fly is going on there because that's just extra insulating layer and you know it's actually kind of a cool day it's like 17 celsius we're we're not even at like 70 degrees fahrenheit so yeah huh. but step two time guys oh this will be good um a little a little different than what i normally set up um but you know it's over 40 years old at least it's 40 years old minimum and it's uh, remarkable. They really don't make anything to last like this these days. Definitely a storm rolling in. I don't know if it's gonna hit us or just pass by, but we'll start a little fire just in case. And on today's episode of Don't Do Anything Steve Does, get this thing going. Yeah, we had a short and brisk rainstorm here, so we, we hid uh, like cowards. But it's time to start dinner, and what I'm making tonight is steak on a stick. Because uh, my three favorite food groups are deep fried, wrapped in foil, and on a stick. So, 
we're doing one on a stick tonight. This is uh, the veggies. I've used, I uh, got some quartered up pieces of sweet Vidalia onion, some pre-cooked baby potatoes, and some button mushrooms. And I have them soaking in just a regular, over-the-counter, consumer-grade um, Italian dressing. And here's uh, the steak. I got sirloin, because it was on sale, and it's a good grilling steak too. It's one of my favorites. And what I've done in here, I just, I don't come up with recipes, I just Google the easiest one that has five stars. So this steak marinade was called the best steak marinade uh, on all recipes or whatever. And I actually filmed this a little bit earlier, but I had the camera still set on time lapse. Anyhow, I'll let you know what goes into it. And I've just got it in a Ziploc bag sitting here soaking. Uh, equal parts of soy sauce, um, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and steak sauce. Black pepper and uh, Dijon, Dijon mustard. And it calls for minced garlic, but I have garlic powder. Uh, it's not as good. And we're not going to get into the merits of, um, of the olive oil involved in this. I just got the recipe, so any debates on the recipe, uh, I'm going to direct you to allrecipes.com. Anyhow, I didn't add the salt because I figure salt is an active ingredient in soy sauce anyways, and uh, obviously the steak sauce too, and I have to keep the arteries nice and supple. So I'm going to let this soak for a bit, and uh, same with these. We're eating a little bit late tonight, and we'll cook on the fire, but it's uh, it's late because I do want to kind of catch a glimpse of that comet that's been flying around. And uh, what a better place than out here on the acreage because it's out of the city lights and we can see everything in the sky above us. So let these, let these guys go and I'll take you on a quick uh, walk about on the tent. We'll see what's happening with this whole situation. So the make and model of this 40 plus year old tent is a Klepper. Uh, it sounds German and it seems a little over engineered so it could possibly be uh, of German manufacture and still kicking at least 40 years because uh, that was just when the newspaper was in there and we'll, we'll take a look at that in a sec but uh, inside it's not as big as we thought in Crazy Neighbor's garage it looked pretty big <clears throat> and we've decided He's going to sleep in his Suburban tonight, and I'm going to hunker down in the old Klepper. Okay, it's got uh, very nice high quality metal zippers, and a, a screen that, I don't know what that's made out of, but after all these years it's still really intact. Moving inside, has, uh, you know, some storage pockets, little closable vent holes all the way around it. And as you can see, this would be a little bit cozy for Crazy Neighbor and I. And, oh, here's the old newspaper in there. 25 cents from August 12th, 1980. So we're almost coming on to 40 years exactly. Unbelievable piece of history here. And, yeah. Oh, the bay. Yeah, reasonable deals on uh, canister vacuums right on so that's what we got in here the whole thing is largely supported by pegs there's not really much structure to it versus modern day tents so it's got a rubber bottom on it and that's held up well through the years Ooh, we missed a tent peg but uh yeah, it's home for the night. Ooh, I got the old hunker down truck over there too. That needs some some repairs desperately. Stick a cot in there because I'm too old to sleep on the ground. Okay. Yeah, it would definitely be a little crowded with two cots, but uh, yeah, this is definitely just a, a two-person tent oh no skeeters gonna zip this up quick get out of here you there we 
we go. All right, the campfire's burned down small enough that we can get close to it now, so that's really good. Uh, there was a bunch of old construction pieces laying around, and they're not pressure treated. Some of them had a little bit of paint, but those burned off a long time ago. So we should be good to cook in this in a few hours. Just throwing on, you know, more pieces of regular clean wood, and that'll be just fine. This is uh, looking like a really good evening. The uh, rain has stopped. It's just beautiful out here. It's about time to start cooking. I downloaded that app so I can uh, try and find in the sky where that, that comet is zipping around. But, in the meantime, uh, oh, oh. I'll get the veggies onto this skewer first. Because uh, I don't want to do the raw meat and then uh, the veggies after that. Good, hey? Really good, really good. Mm. Mm. Let's stick this in the fire and oh, see what happens. For you. There we go, nicely grilled and beautiful veggies. These on here. Oh, it smells fantastic. Time for the star of the show, this, uh, this steak on the stick. I can see one of these falling in the fire very easily. Well, we'll be careful, Steve. You wanna okay, roast that up? Thanks so All much, right. Steve. Um, cook it to your desired doneness, and uh, but not well done. That's against the rules here. Just did the first batch. Pretty oh, nice and nice. rare. Pretty nice and rare by the looks of it. Oh, look, I got some protein. Oh, yeah, they're, they're zipping around here. So, yeah, mushrooms. Oh, 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 mm. Delicious. Steak. Mm -hmm. I'll grab a hunk of steak myself. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to be pretty rare. Mm. Really good. Yeah. Yep, now we're talking. Very, very good. <laughs> yeah. That's the way I like it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That was just by fluke. I couldn't even give you an estimate on how long to, to cook it on a stick. Now, the cooking is a little labor-intensive, but... Uh, if you had a bunch more, uh, bunch more uh, hot dog sticks, you could probably do more at once. However, we're gonna pick away at this. Cook some more. Things are gonna be pretty good around here. Oh, is this ever delicious. Crazy Neighbor is going to hunker down in his Suburban right now. I'm gonna crawl into this thing, because you know, we've had a lot of poisonous gas uh, out of the thermocell in the house. Uh, I don't know exactly how poisonous it is, but I'm sure it would not be good. We've had this running for quite a while, and we just don't want to sleep in there with it. Outside, it's just fine and dandy. So, before I hunker down, I'm going to give a huge shout out to anybody that's bought one of these things. and all the people that have made donations to the beer fund, uh, the beer gift fund. Thank you guys all so much. Uh, your class acts, every one of you, uh, guys, girls, and I hope there's no children donating to the beer fund, but uh, everybody who's donated, thank you so, so much. Uh, you, you've really made 
uh, a lot of these videos possible and the boat that we are knee deep in construction on right now in order to get out for our couple of weeks going down the North Saskatchewan River uh, pretty well as far as we can go in a couple of weeks. So it's going to be the adventure of a lifetime uh, built on the crummiest, cheapest boat we could possibly <laughs> cobble together. And that was uh, last year. Uh, my business was still struggling. Uh, I didn't have nearly the beer donations or uh, subscribers that I do now. So that boat, if you look at the front of it, it's missing plywood. And we're just going to keep it that way to remember there's no plywood there because we ran out of money and couldn't buy that one little last piece for the end of the boat. Um, but uh, very thankful, very thankful for where I am today. Uh, the business has picked up, uh, gaining a lot of subscribers, and uh, it is about time to hunker down. So I'm gonna shut this noise and light off. And uh, time to go to bed. I got the screen closed and that's kind of what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna close the other the other part because I like it like this and there's more ventilation, that's for sure. The smell of a canvas tent is formidable if you've never used one before. Uh, it reminds me of my childhood. I think we had a big canvas one actually when I first started to go camping, so this smells like camping to me. And it's... Uh, going to be a pretty good night. Uh, I'm going to curl up here, but yeah, this tent seems to be the perfect amount of insulation for this weather. And this weather tonight, I mean, we're talking um, right now probably 15 Celsius, so 65 Fahrenheit around there, and it's going to go lower tonight, I'm sure. We did manage to see that comet that's been zipping around, and I was very pleased with that. Obviously, um, I can't get it on film, but I did take a photo or two. So the comet's on there, and we're not going to see that one for another 6,000 years, and I doubt I'm going to live that long. So it's nice to have seen it while I got the chance. And I'm going to, uh, I got a Jackery power pack running this trouble light in here, so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, but I think it's about time to crawl into bed and oh boy well, nobody wanted to see that I'm gonna crawl into bed shut this light off oh yeah this is gonna be fantastic sleep I can tell already I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning. The sun is up for another beautiful day on this world. And my construction crew is going, doing their thing. You can hear them working away. And I was right about this thing. It gets pretty hot. So I'm going to get out of here and uh, get some fresh air. Because canvas is uh, its not like any tents they make these days. This thing is uh, its what you'd want in the winter. That's all I can say about that. So, I would say the pros of this vintage equipment is it is warm, you can't uh, deny that, and it is durable. Uh, the downsides are the weight, um, the ventilation, the smell, uh, the, the ease of setup. So it's, it was neat to try out. I don't know if I would actually use this uh, in a serious camping trip, but it was uh, certainly neat to try out. So for, I know I have a lot of new subscribers there from this last uh, a stealth one at the highway rest stop. Um, all the new subscribers, fair warning, 
run now things get weird <laughs> uh, there's not every video is a stealth video every video does have some type of um, unusual thing to it I don't want all the videos to look the same um, I know other outdoors channels all the videos like blend together and it's like oh part five part ten or, or you know it's I, I want them to be unique and I don't want to be doing the same thing all the time either so I like to rotate through stealth camping uh, so you're not going to see a stealth camping every single week but uh, I, I do try to get one in a month for sure Aside from that, I normally uh, have some projects to build or trying out, you know, something unusual like this um, or just uh, stuff that shouldn't be camping gear. I try to use that as camping gear. So um, if you're okay with that, uh, stay on board and thanks for subscribing. Um, the stealth camping, some people ask, how long have I been doing that stealth camping? To be honest, for years, but I kind of wanted a serious outdoors channel like a real one um, and I found I lived in a city of Edmonton of about a million people and so I was driving in order to get to anywhere serious to go camping uh, that would make for a good video I was driving three hours four hours away to get to these spots and film like beautiful nature beautiful scenery and the thing was I was just getting pretty broke so I was sitting in the city one day I hadn't put up a video in like a month or two and I said, well, you know what? I'm just gonna go down into the woods and camp like I always had been, just, you know, for fun. But this time I'll film it, you know? Like, it's not a real serious uh, out there camping video. And, and then that one was really successful. People, you know, I guess most people live in a city. Uh, so that's kind of relatable. There's always those little strips of land you think that you could uh, set up a tent in or camp in. Some of it might not be that safe some of it might be trespassing but generally like the public land of the cities in Canada anyways um, you maybe even be allowed they probably wouldn't say anything they may give you a ticket or a fine um, similar to having your dog off the leash but uh, definitely if they catch you they're not just gonna let you sleep there for the night so that you know you really do want to hide because you don't want to have to take your tent down at 2 in the morning especially after many step twos um, yeah, it's uh, it's best to be stealthy, so that's where the whole stealth camping thing came from. And um, I have to join these workers on the house. This is the big push this week. Uh, we're going to get siding soffits, fascia, eaves, downspouts, the whole building envelope sealed and perfect so we don't have any more mice issues. Um, and that'll help us sleep a lot better at night without mice scurrying underfoot. So. Um, yeah, I do feel lazy when I'm just sitting here chatting with you guys when they're all working. So, I better get over there and lend a hand. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Um, if you're just stumbling across these videos, uh, please consider subscribing. It does help. Uh, but likes and comments, shares. Uh, even if you're not ready to, to um, uh, subscribe, I do put up a video on Thursdays uh, as a general rule. And um, if you got alerts on, then you'll also know if I put up an additional video uh, that doesn't fall on a Thursday, like this one. So, cheers guys. Hunkered down at home, and I am just dying to get on the river for that, for that big two-week trip. It's coming up real soon, so uh, stay safe, and cheers everybody.